Hey everybody, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Juji and today we are going to spend a spooky summer weekend together as this is Summerween. So for those of you who, who, who don't know, Summerween is a week-long readathon hosted by Gabby from Gabby Reads and Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte. And it is for people who want to bring that dark, autumn, spookish Halloween vibe into the middle of summer. I do this readathon every single year and last year, that was my favorite summer ween. I had a blast. I read The Hacienda and I read My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. And oh my God, it, it was amazing. But I think that for this year, I also selected a couple of really good books. So there are five prompts for this readathon. The first one is to read a book in the dark. The second is to read a thriller. The third is to read a book set in the fall. The fourth prompt is to read a book with orange or black on the cover. And then the fifth prompt is to read a manga, graphic novel, or novella. Okay, so the book that I selected for the first prompt, which is to read a book in the dark, is Carmilla. Carmilla is an 1872 novel and it was written by an Irish author, Sheridan Lafanu. And many people say that this book is like, you know, one of the very early works of vampire fiction and this was what influenced or inspired Bram Stoker to write Dracula. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I remember that when I read Dracula, I was actually really freaked out. It is supposed to be just gothic, so you know, it's it's not like anything super scary, but to me it was scary, especially that scene on the Russian ship when the sailors start disappearing. And then there is this other scene in Dracula where like Dracula scales the castle wall. Like to me, these scenes were actually really scary. So I decided that Carmilla, a gothic novel that is basically a novel that inspired Dracula itself, I think it's a good choice. And by the way, did you see the new Dracula movie trailer? Because that is like the whole movie is basically just that scene when people start disappearing from that ship. That trailer was so scary. So this story is narrated by a young protagonist, Laura, who is being preyed upon by a female vampire named Carmilla. And Carmilla also expresses some romantic feelings towards Laura. So this classic was a pioneer, not only because in like, you know, 1872, it was like one of the first vampire fictions, but also because it was like, you know, a lesbian fiction. And then the second prompt to read a thriller, I selected uh, the newest release of Riley Sager, the only one left. Now I know that Riley Sager is kind of like a, a hit and miss for many people. I've only read Lock Every Door and Home Before Dark from Riley Sager. And those were really good books. They're not like favorite books of mine, but they were really good. And you know, they did what they were supposed to do. They, they freaked me out. They were definitely spookish. So I think that this book will, <laughs> will do the same. I know that his other novels, I, I don't know the names of those novels. People didn't have really good opinions about those ones i don't know i'm hoping that this is good though and by the way because this one also has orange on the cover and this book is set in the fall you know this satisfies a couple of other prompts as well so this book is set in 1983, mostly set in 1983, and our protagonist is Kit, who is a caretaker, but she recently lost her job because one of her patients died under suspicious circumstances. But now she's being rehired because she needs to take care of an elderly woman, Leonora Hope. And Leonora Hope has been a long time suspect in the murder of her entire family. Apparently she killed and stabbed her uh, father and hanged her sister, but nobody was really ever able to prove it. And that's why she is free, but she is super old and she had multiple strokes and she cannot like, you know, she's just sitting in a wheelchair. She cannot take care of herself at all. That's why Kit comes into the picture and she moves into this hope 
mansion which is built on the coastline of Maine so you know it also takes place in New England and is there anything spookish that takes place in New England <laughs> that definitely got an effect on me <laughs> and soon after she moves in she starts hearing noises and footsteps and people move objects in in her room in the middle of the night so you know everything becomes very scary pretty soon and I'm guessing that we will uncover like who killed Leonora's family was it Leonora something else in the background and apparently it also got some paranormal elements I don't know we'll see we'll see how this book goes for the fourth prompt I actually selected a non-fiction book Dark Archives by Megan Rosenblum and Megan Rosenblum is a librarian and a historian who wants to uncover in this book the history and the science behind books that were bound in human skin ah uh, because yeah <laughs> it happened it happened in the past that for whatever reasons some people bound these very rare books into human skin now this book seemed to have you know everything uh detective work and uh, academia or academic intrigue and medical history history um i am i am really excited to read this book i understand that it is probably not for the skimish and i have no idea what to expect from this book but i think it is a perfect selection for this summer bean all right now without any further ado let's dive in and let's get to the vlog part of this video I am here with the first check-in and I know that this is very dark and it's not the best quality but I just want to give you the real you know like this is how I am currently reading Carmilla which is the first book that I started um this book it's only three chapters and I am still um in the first chapter and um so far um it's going like fine you know it's typical gothic classics laura is our protagonist and she is the one who narrates this story and laura lives with her widowed father in the middle of a forest in styria in austria and she is really longing for companionship and honestly this yearning is really making me sad like she is just so incredibly lonely and there is a carriage accident right outside of their house mansion castle i should say and who was in that carriage carmilla of course and laura's father decides that they will take in Carmilla um, to fully recover from this accident. Carmilla and Laura, they develop a friendship and it is so clear that Carmilla has romantic feelings towards Laura. What's uh, very atmospheric in this book and what's giving the little bit of a creepy vibe is obviously Carmilla and how Carmilla um, refuses to share any background information she doesn't even want to tell laura what is her family name she also sleeps like mostly during the day she only comes outside of her room in the afternoon and then it turns out that she sleep walks during the night and then young ladies like kind of like laura's age they start dying because of a very secret melody like so far this is all that's happened and i don't think i will say anything more because carmilla is a very very short book and obviously i don't want to like, spoil anything we already know that it's a vampire story and we already know that it's a gothic story it is very atmospheric and and it does have a couple of unsettling moments but you know it's not like it's it's, it's not a horror book but so far I am enjoying it and as far as classics go it is very readable 
you know i've said it before that my first language is not english so sometimes i struggle with classics but not with um with this one it's it's um it's actually a really pleasant read so i am i am happy that i picked this book <laughs> oh well <laughs> now this is fun <laughs> not sure that you can see me but hopefully you can hear me so i'm outside um i am finishing Carmilla here outside in the dark. I finished the first chapter inside, but <laughs> reading in the dark <laughs> when you don't have a flashlight, it's actually not a fun experience. And my apartment is really, really hot. So I decided to come outside and listen to the audiobook while I am just like here, cooling down a little bit. Now, the audiobook. I must say, that this audiobook is fantastic. I downloaded it because if you have Audible membership, then this audiobook is free. I didn't know though that this is the dramatized version. It's not just like, you know, any other like normal audiobooks. It got a full cast and it got all these like um, extra features. Like for example, when there are scenes, when they are uh, praying at a church then you can actually hear like the priest praying in latin or for example when there's music because there's like a ball scene or whatever then you can hear the music uh playing so um this is a very elevated experience this is uh, fantastic so i think i'm going to finish the other two chapters here outside and i am going to update you about my thoughts next morning i'm back with my first book review because I finished Carmilla yesterday. This is Saturday morning. It's like 8 a.m. or something like that. It is incredibly dark because we have a huge storm going out there. So, you know, don't be confused. <laughs> this is a completely different day the next morning. So, Carmilla, I have very positive feelings about this book. I definitely like this book more than Dracula, though there is no real competition because I really didn't like Dracula. And the reason for that was the female characters in that book. I mean, I don't know what I expected because, you know, it was just a white, very privileged man in the 1800s writing about women. So, mm. but I really didn't like how he portrayed the women and the female characters in that book. You know, they didn't really drive the plot forward. They were just there to be helpless and they were just there to scream. Mm. I, I, I really didn't like that. But in Carmilla, the female uh, characters are actually sent to stage. And it's not just about Carmilla, who is like a lesbian vampire. No, the female uh, characters in this book, they were very intelligent and they actually drove the plot forward. They were very much part of this story and this story was female-centric. So I don't know how Sheridan Lafanu was able to publish this in 1872. I think I'm going to look that up. Carmilla has all the characteristics of a good gothic fiction, in my opinion. Like, you know, we have the very mysterious and dark atmosphere. We have the lone castle in the middle of an Austrian forest where everybody like lives in solidarity and we have of course the paranormal creature or the paranormal entity so i think it was really well done if you are somebody who read this book and please let me know what you think about the ending because that ending and especially the last sentence that is just something that's really not clear for me like wh what's happening what what is going on <laughs> can you like please explain it to me i have like you know a feeling about what happened but still it's like especially that last sentence i'm like is she or isn't she you know by finishing carmilla i am done with the first book and so far is definitely a success. So I picked up the second book in this readathon, the only one left by Riley Sager this morning because I went to the gym and I had a very long session in the gym. So I decided that I'm going to take the audiobook with me because the audiobook was like immediately available at my library, which is just crazy. So I listened to the audiobook and I think I completed like uh, six um, chapters and six chapters is... Um, like 50, 53 pages in this book. Like nothing special has happened so far. Like, you know, uh, the events that are happening right now are what the synopsis as well detailed. Kit 
is a caretaker, but she's really struggling at the moment because she cannot get a job. She was a suspect in a um, murder case. She is a caretaker and she was taking care of her own ill mother who was suffering from stomach cancer and um, her mother overdosed painkillers, drugs, and they thought that Kit was the one who was responsible for it. So, you know, there was a police investigation against her. And because of that, she cannot find a job. She needs money. We all know how this goes. So she agrees reluctantly to take care of Leonora Hope. Like nobody really wants to do this job because they all know that she is possibly a killer who killed her entire family in like 1929 or something like that. So Kit um, moves in. And then now we get to see Leonora a little bit more. And then we get to see the staff who is still like working at this mansion, taking care of Leonora. Leonora so far to me is a, is a little bit creepy. Like, unfortunately, they say that she had like many strokes and she is unable to take care of herself. She is sitting in a wheelchair and she is not able to talk. She is not able to communicate. She's using, uh, I don't know, one of her hands, left or right hands, I'm sorry, for communication. Like she's tapping on a keyboard, like, you know, one means no and then two taps mean yes. But she is definitely giving me a little bit of a creepy vibe. And obviously we are very early on in the book, so I cannot like, you know, predict how the story is going to go but I think that Leonora is probably not who we think she is that is my feeling that is what my intuition is telling me so now I'm going to continue with this book like physically reading it on the couch I just want to have an hour long chill because again this gym session was very long and I cannot wait to sit down drink my protein and then read my little book and once I'm done with that I gotta go and run a couple of errands but like all good errands so I will probably continue with the audiobook I'm gonna go grab some uh, breakfast I have to return a couple of Amazon packages and since I'm gonna be at Whole Foods anyways I might just pick up some groceries and then I drop off some book donations at the library so you know I'll be just running around and I really want to uh, listen to this audio book because I am very intrigued by this story I'm finding it very interesting and maybe there's a chance because this is super early in the morning that I'll finish this book today if that happens I will definitely update you I'm back. I'm back to give you a final update on the Riley Sager book that I've been reading. So, unfortunately, I have to say that uh, I feel that this book is very average because I liked the other two books from Riley Sager so much, which was The Home Before Dark and The Lock Every Door. I did expect a little bit more from this book. When I finished those books and, you know, I just closed the cover and I was like, okay, I know exactly how I feel about these books. I love these books. This, uh, not so much. I can definitely see now, like, you know, after reading um, three of his books, I can definitely see the Riley Sager formula. So many things are um, the same in his books. Like, for example, we have Jewel 
timeline something happening in the past and then something happening in the present Th that actually doesn't doesn't bother me that much i always enjoyed um the events happening in the past more than the events happening in the present so that doesn't bother me that much and he always um has a female character a female character who is driven by desperation like you know whatever stupid or not stupid situation they get into it's always because they are desperate which happens you know but all these female characters have such questionable decisions make such questionable decisions and we always have a guy that they just trust on the spot they don't have a past they don't know each other they like literally meet on the spot and the main female character decides to trust that male character in these three books he also have this very gothic house element which I also like that works with me very well so I wish that we could have gotten a little bit more of that in this book. I have some positive thoughts about this book and I also have some really negative thoughts about this book and because of that it kind of like they, they balance each other out and that's how I end in the middle. I think that this book was average. So first let's discuss what I liked because let's be positive here. I really liked the gothic element in this book because yes we have this beautiful huge mansion on a main cliffside and like you know you can hear the wind you can hear the rain and all the noises that the wind and the rain makes and you cannot decide is it paranormal or is it just the wind like that atmosphere was really good and i really liked it i really loved how it all began because we started with leonora's point of view and in general i really liked the past timeline like 1929 and leonora's timeline i didn't really like the present one that much and i was very intrigued from the beginning i was like okay leonora like tell me more i really want to know like what happened to you and what happened to your family so that that was also really good and honestly until the final like 100 pages i really like this book it was just like i said very intriguing very interesting and i didn't want to stop reading it i didn't want to put it down like again i read this book basically like within 24 hours and that in my eyes makes it a good book but then that last 100 pages happens and oh boy i didn't i didn't really like it why you may ask because of the plot twists <sighs> i think that riley sager tried to do too much and like you know sometimes less is more there were a lot of plot twists in this book and it's okay like i was able to follow along it didn't confuse me but all these plot twists, I think they were just there for the shock value. And many of these plot twists, they were all based on coincidences. And I couldn't help but to think... Like, really? A coincidence? Like, again? Oh, like, really? Hmm, I'm not sure. I don't believe this. Whether you're gonna enjoy the plot twists or the ending of this book, I think it depends on what you like when it comes to your plot twist. If you need something that's shocking and jaw dropping, then you might enjoy this book. There's nothing wrong with plot twists like that, but I'm somebody who wants something that's more sensible, that's more acceptable, or at least have a little bit of a reality check to the story itself just like i said average it's not mediocre but it's also like not one of the best book that i've ever read from riley sager again i think that it was just too much it was very obvious for me that he was really trying to shock the audience and for some people just like i said this could work unfortunately it didn't work for me the cover I love like this cover is one of my favorite covers this year so I'm done with Riley Sager and it is time to pick up my third book in this readathon that book is the dark archives and I also like the cover of this book I haven't started this book so you know I cannot really tell you anything about this book 
it's very short. I mean, it is a non-fiction, so probably I will not read it that fast, but it's also not very long. Oh, it's only like about 220, 225 pages. So this is not really gonna take me that long. Um, I think I can finish everything today. I'm just gonna make some tea and chill on the couch or in my armchair, just reading this book. I might go outside because of yesterday's storm. Now the temperature is a lot cooler here in Boston. So I might just go outside to a park and just enjoy my little book with a coffee or something. Because it is a nonfiction, I don't think that I can update you guys like so like frequently about what's happening in the book. But once I finished it, I'm definitely gonna come back and tell you my opinion about this book. I am back again with the final book and the final update in this reading vlog. This is Monday morning, like super early in the Monday morning. It's like 7 a.m. or something like that. And I am about to go to work. But before I do that, I just wanted to tell you my final thoughts about this book. Just like I said in the intro, this book is a nonfiction book, a nonfiction book that basically tells the history medical history and the origins of anthropodermic bibliopagy, which basically means books bound into human skin. I personally didn't have an issue reading this book, but also, you know, you got to consider that I am a scientist, I am in medical sciences. So, you know, sometimes certain things that they talk about in this book, like, for example, the dissection, the dissection of a human body that doesn't really make me feel uncomfortable but you know if you are somebody who cannot deal with that then definitely do not read this book the author in this book doesn't only talk about the origins of these books but also there is a little bit of scientific element because she talks about the testing like how actually librarians and historians when they come across a book that's allegedly bound in human skin, like how they actually test it. And of course, we talk about the origins of the books, the people, mostly medical practitioners, uh, who decided to use human skin to bind certain manuscripts. And sometimes when it is plausible, we get to know a little bit of a story about the people whose skin was used. Ultimately, if you think that you are somebody who can handle this topic, I recommend this book because it's interesting. It's definitely definitely not perfect like the writing style is not perfect the author definitely likes to talk about herself a little bit i'm not sure that um it added a lot to the book but you know it's it's fine there was nothing that bothered me that much also the author has an opinion as a historian and as a librarian and um she is not afraid to put that opinion into this book. And sometimes when it comes to nonfiction, I just like facts. I don't really need the authors like, you know, to manipulate me in any ways. But I think that she actually does that. Like she definitely has her own um, opinion and she's not afraid to say that. I mean, she can. This is her book, <laughs> you know, I'm just not sure how I feel about that. Ultimately, I would recommend because it is educational, I feel, but it is not a perfect nonfiction. So don't expect to read an incredibly entertaining nonfiction book because I don't think that you're gonna get that experience. This is it, guys. This is the end of this reading vlog and this is the end of summer ween and i hope that you enjoyed spending some time with me i definitely enjoyed doing this vlog and i cannot wait to do next year's summer ween so <laughs> if you like this video then give it a thumbs up 
hit share and subscribe if you want to you are welcome here and you are most certainly welcome to hang with us and i'll see you soon in an upcoming video bye